Roger over Cordia, you welcome indeed to another edition of the programme. Well, this week we'll bring you highlights of a major festival celebrating the 1798 rebellion in Castlebar. The three-day festival was organised by Castlebar Lions Club, Mayo County Council and other local groups. This is the first unique festival that we're going to have in Castlebar for a long, long time. The, the town has been crying out for something different and the Festival of Music for 1798 to commemorate the 1798 uh, battle is, is the ideal thing that we're going to have this weekend. And uh, the fact that it's been so long since there's been a major fire, I would imagine there'd be huge interest in the town here. Well, the expectations are really high. We've got our fingers crossed that the weather's going to hold and I have to take my hat off to the organising committee with Ronan Moran and the Lions Club here in Castlebar who really are behind this. The Chamber are backing it, of course, as, as we're the local business in the town, but all the hard work and hard graft has been put in by, by Ronan and his crew. And Fingers crossed, with a bit of fine weather, we're going to have a really big crowd. A lot of events to come to, so whether it's for the March of the Pikemen this evening, whether it's the events on the Mall tomorrow, and also all the music that's taking place in Castlebar over the next three days, Castlebar is the place to be this weekend. We love to be part of the Colour Party, which would generally lead uh, any parade, or for now, the Pikemen up the, the main street to the Mall. Uh, where we'll be raising the flag, Irish flag, the tricolour. So what, what's the colour party made up of? Colour party made up of an, one officer and two sergeants, always so. Our sergeant will, our, the officer will carry the flag. We are the, the lead of a parade. Uh, the flag is the top point of any parade, so it is. And uh, we would have our own ceremony that we march the flag onto a parade, and then we will march off. We would never just put it back in the back of a car and head away. We always make a ceremony of it, because it's our national flag. <laughs> Ronan, the idea of this festival, how did it come about? So, the idea, we wanted to bring a festival to Castlebar. So we were looking at different ideas. The idea was spouted to have a festival here. But of course, we soon realised that it was the 225th anniversary of the 1798 rebellion. And of course, historically, the first offensive would have taken place a lot more in Leinster and um, in Wexford. So Wexford were commemorating it ahead of us. So we thought, wouldn't it be a shame to let Castlebar uh, be one of those towns that didn't commemorate it. So we all came together and we decided to host this festival. Castlebar had a pivotal role in the second offensive. There was a, a combined force of between uh, two and two and a half thousand Irish and French soldiers that uh, defeated a strong army of 6,000 here. So it really, really was a battle that defied the odds. And it, it was one of those uh, very few wins the Irish and the French had during that 1798 yes, rebellion. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, later in, in that, it was a game of cat and mouse, you know, uh, you saw a, a situation where my own people came from Mohol in County Leitrim, where uh, General Lake and his troops were in Mohol and five miles out the road where my grandmother came from in Clune, the French were camping. So they were kind of zigzagging, avoiding each other. Cornwallis um, got a very, very strong, 100,000 strong army over and uh, they were focusing in, on Athlone for the troops to come down the strategic um, area of Athlone. And uh, the French gathered a lot of intelligence of course, the races of Castlebar, they would have got intelligence from a local priest in um, Buffinon, I believe, and um, he would have suggested coming through the mountains. So um, it became a game in cat and mouse, and unfortunately one that we lost. We've uh, got a comprehensive schedule, and we're just delighted that yourselves from Television Ireland, Irish Television are here, and uh, so much of the media have got behind us, and um, we're, we're happy to deliver this festival to Castlebar. And we're delighted to have the Defence Forces back again on Sunday. And they will have a colour party. I suppose part of remembering what happened is, you know, the human element. A lot of people lost their lives. And we're going to have a relay and ceremony, a minute silence here on the Mall. And we're delighted that the Defence Forces have a strong, strong part to take in that. So, we've got a lot of highlights, Henry. As I say, just after this now, we've got a, a great talk. 
It's actually on the five letters of a lady called Jane Fraser. Her dad was a captain in the British Army, a Scottish guy, and it was called the Races of Castle Bar for your viewers that don't know, because the British fled so quickly they called it the Races of Castle Bar. But he stayed on fighting, and I believe uh, there was a number of casualties at the as a result of this particular man and he met his Waterloo here on the steps of the courthouse across the Mall. So um, we have a talk now at 8 o'clock. We've got a ball tonight in uh, Tolstras, the Humbert Ball. Tomorrow we've got a comprehensive schedule. So we're kicking off here at 10 o'clock. We've got another talk at 11 o'clock from Dr. Michael O'Connor and Caroline O'Connor who are delivering tonight's talk. They've got one on Castlebar Prison and the 1798 Rebellion. We have the town band who I'm grateful uh, two for helping us out. They'll also be performing on the Mall at 12 o'clock tomorrow. And at half 12 we have a very good reenactment. It's loosely based on a true story of a, uh, a Captain Timlin that absconded and uh, he was court-martialed here on the Mall and unfortunately he met his Waterloo also. Well, Henry, we're in Christchurch, this beautiful church on the green in Castle Bar. It has a history dating back to 1739. And uh, we're here this evening as part of the Castle Bar 1798 Festival that was launched a few minutes ago following the March of the Pikemen uh, on, the, on the green. And this evening, Caroline and I, we're going to be talking about the letters of a lady by the name of Jane Fraser. And Jane Fraser was the daughter of Major James Fraser, who played a very significant role in the putting down of the rebellion here in Mayo. I'm reading four letters this evening and three of them were written in Westport and one of them was written in June. And they're written by Miss Jane Fraser to her friend Anne Brodie Campbell, who's living in Scotland. And as Michael explained, she's explaining about the social um, things that are happening at the time and the regiment and describing what some of the nice soldiers look like. Now we have a little bit of an exhibition as well. So this is a, a bronze death mask of the Patriot Robert Emmett. It dates from the 19th century. And beside it here, we've got one of the publications on uh, Robert Emmett by Robert Postgate. And just if we move around here to the left, uh, we can see a few, a few other items. This is, um, this is a French newspaper from 1799. And it talks about issues in Mayo around the um, I suppose the, the uh, putting down of the, re the rebellion and it mentions some uh, people in Westport and around uh, Castlebar, etc. And then if we move over to this section here, you can see we have two letters, uh, original letters written by General Humbert um, when he returns to France after 1800. In one of them, he's looking for arrears of pay and the others, other, he's looking for a role in one of the regiments. So we're here outside Tolster's, great night in Tolster's Bar, celebrating 1798, uh, the year of the French. We're a French company, um, an ophthalmology company, everything to do with the eye. So we're delighted to be able to sponsor tonight, um, just to really get the festivities off to a great start in Castle Bar on a Friday night. Um, everything is going so, so well here, Henry. Uh, delighted to see uh, tyranny talks in there, but also to reenact uh, the year of the French where the French liberated Castlebar those many, many years ago. So, great night being had by all. Yeah. So tonight, Henry, is the, the Humbert Ball, the first of its kind, really, in a reenactment as well of 1798, the year of the French. So we're having French food, French festivities, and it's a great celebration of the Frenchness of us, but also the Irishness of us. So we're having a great night here in the Humbert, at the Humbert Ball. <laughs> A most interesting uh, talk by a historian whose grasp of detail is fascinating and uh, of course that's what we expect from Michael. I thought it was very informative and uh, I fleshed out some questions I had in my head. Uh, you know I knew, I, knew, I knew the bones of, of the rebellion and that but I fleshed out some little uh, you know questions I had in my head about it and it was very well presented and uh, um, it's very important to have uh, an accurate account of historical events because, uh, because if you're in conversation somewhere with somebody again you might be kind of more or less peddling propaganda it's it's very it's very important as i say to to, to, you know, to have an accurate account and if if somebody says something contrary to that account that you can correct them 
Well, I'm involved in the 1798 committee here in town for the festival this weekend, and I'm very interested in history anyway. And um, I wanted to hear about 1798, uh, the history around the the, the struggle and uh, how the, bot the battle uh, went on and the punishments and the executions afterwards. So I purchased some books here by uh, Michael O'Connor and uh, I'm very interested in the subject and I'm looking forward to reading them. Well, Michael O'Connor contacted us to help him out do a little reenactment of this court martial of Corporal Timlin, or Kimlin as he's sometimes known. And I'm sure you know us, we love to dress up and take part in stuff. So it was a bit of fun and bringing a bit of history to life and showing the people what actually happened because these court martials were very quick and nobody really cared if you were innocent. They just wanted justice and somebody to hang. With my involvement with drama and the panto and everything else, I always have a core bunch of people that I can call on and like they love a bit of it. And when they knew it was only about the short little part and literally a couple of nights rehearsal, they were on board. Oh, Henry, it's absolutely fantastic. And as you can see here in the mall, so many people have turned up, came out to support the event. I suppose a committee came together maybe two and a half months ago and with the Lions Club, some of the councillors, we all got involved and this event is here today. It's fantastic for the town. We need a summer event. We're lucky we always have horror in the barracks come Halloween. We needed a, an event for the summer and I think this has really come together so well in such a short space of time. Yeah, it's fantastic, Henry. Look, we've been crying out for a long time to do a festival in Castlebar, and this is a fantastic community effort, really, led by the Lions Club, Rona and Morden, and a lot of organisations have got involved in it. And there's, there's something for everyone. But I think it's important, uh, a lot of the time, the, the immense history of Castlebar 1798 is forgotten about. So this is an opportunity now to, to keep them, and to young people in particular, to know about the history of that famous battle as one of the uh, the only battle that the, uh, during the 1798 rebellion right around the country that there was a victory for the uh, Irish and uh, British, uh, the French forces. So fantastic. And look, there's a lot of activity and it's great to see it and hopefully we build on it in the next couple of years. It was so realistic when I seen that rope hanging from the branch. I got a slight shiver up my back because they would have held a hanging on a, either a holiday or a fair day so that they have a maximum crowd of five or ten thousand people right here on the, right here on the, on the green and uh, they would be going around selling what you call toffee apples apples dipped in toffee uh, and it was a carnival atmosphere for and the children and adults would all come out and some people lots of people would be there because they'd be sorry for the for the man that would have been hung because they would be supporting them quietly and uh, they have really captured the moment here today and I'm very proud to be a Castlebar man. Last night we had, uh, we had the parade, uh, the pikemen, uh, through the town. We started in, in Starball, uh, up the main street, Ellison Street, and in on the mile. And i never seen anything like it. The colour in the town, the flags, the bunting, the tricolours, the Irungo Bra flag, the French flag, unbelievable, the Mio flag, the Castle Bear flag. I've never seen anything like it. Well, some days I can't remember how I ended up out here. Something about the money and building a career. Gina, how did you enjoy your gig here this afternoon? I absolutely loved it. My heart is bursting out. It was lovely to see old faces like friends from home and their children and dancing and yeah, fantastic. So I love the mall here, there's so many memories growing up here in school and you know, hanging around and hanging around. <laughs> so it's lovely to be on the fantastic stage provided for the festival. It's amazing, yeah, really, really in the sound production with Gary, fantastic. I'm delighted to be asked here today to play my songs, especially since my 
new album has really got a lot of mayo in it, you know? Yeah, that, and we'll just explain a bit of that, of course. Yeah, it's called the Starlight Ballroom after the old ballroom of rom romance in um, Westport. Westport. Yeah, that's right. I got a letter during lockdown from a man whose father opened the Starlight Ballroom. Healy. Healy, that's right. And he knew I was a fan of Roy Orbison. So he sent me a lovely newspaper cutting of a photo of Roy playing in the Starlight in 1969. And he told me the story about the ballroom and all these show bands that played there. And I just got this fascination with it, that you'd have a few thousand people showing up in Westport and even more rural places back in the day. And that sounded more like the future to me than the past in a lot of ways. And these revolving stages and whatnot. So I ended up kind of doing a lot of research on it and watching your own documentary on YouTube as well. And then one thing led to another and I, I wrote a song about it. And then the producer in America loved the song and the idea around it. So he said, let's make the whole album kind of with that feel about it. Not, not a direct story about that ballroom, but just to kind of throw back to them times. How's it going everybody? Davy Cashton here from the Kilkenny's. Delighted to be back here in Castlebar in the beautiful county of Mayo. We're uh, backstage, we're getting ready to go on. We can't wait to be going on stage and celebrating in all the commemorative uh, 1798 um, uh, festivities. So uh, thanks to everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show and I uh, will catch you again soon. Hop. I'm Paddy Cullivan, I'm a one-man show person. I imagine a kind of a true crime podcast on stage but with 300 images and you're able to hang out with other people like we couldn't do for a long time. So it's actually great fun. Um, I go through the history of the landing of the French at Kilcommon Harbour and their amazing journey across the Windy Gap here into Castle Bar and then their eventual, you know, demise at Balnamuck, but an amazing two weeks of history. And I try and bring it alive for kids and for people. I have hundreds of images in the show. And I also sing a few songs, you know, I'll be singing the Shan Van Vucht, the French are on the say. And the last song I do in the show is The West's Awake, which I dedicate to the great Stephen Dunford, a son of Castle Bar, and the man who, if you don't mind me saying, got us all addicted to 1798 in the first place. Yeah, well, the idea was, was born at a Lions Club meeting that um, we wanted something different for Castle Bar. Um, we have a new committee in the Lions Club in Castle Bar, and the, like, the Lions Club has gone for 40 years. And it's a charitable organisation, so it's usually among all different business people come together at least once a month to provide for the necessary causes that you don't hear about very often. And um, we felt that a festival was needed in Castlebar, so Roland Morton as president of the Lions Club and a few of us got together and we said this is what we're going to do. It was only over seven weeks, the whole thing from, from conception to uh, delivery. And we said we were going to do as good as we can for the period that's in it. Now, there was a lot of music as part of the festival, along with the historical events. Um, and here in the Royal Theatre as well, you've had some yeah. big shows as part of the weekend celebrations. Yeah, like we have Daniel O'Donnell tonight, a sell, sellout show in Castle Bar and the Royal Theatre. And we also, tomorrow night, we have the Tumbling Paddies, which, as you know, is the, one of the biggest acts in the country. Today, they've played seven dates in May or this, this summer alone. And we're still selling out. Daniel, you're very welcome to Castle Bar. Thanks, Henry. Nice and to you see you. And you always know when Daniel's in town, there's a traffic jam <laughs> outside the Royal Theatre here, which is great. Ah, and your sure fans are open for us tonight. Well, that's great. You know, we have been here since 2019. Uh, we hadn't been around Ireland since 2019, you know, because of the way things were. So it's lovely to get back and, and see people again. We've had a great, you know, tour really this is our last weekend more or less we're in dublin tomorrow and then two nights in cork during the week and that's just finished for the summer i've had an album every year i think since 1988 at some point in the year i've had an album in the uk charts which is great from the point of view of the support i've got from the people you know and um i suppose i'm the only artist too that records every year I've, I've recorded, you know, more albums, I'd say, than anybody ever. Um, and the length of time I'm recording. Um, so, I guess sure it's great, you know, it's, I mean, even now, this is as 40 years this summer since I started my first band and 40 years in February since I recorded my Donegal Shore. Yeah. Well, have a great night tonight in Castlebar. Thanks. Lovely to see you, Henry. <laughs> Thank you.
This is the 225th anniversary of the French assisting the Irish in the, the, the well-known races of Casabar. Uh, now, it, 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 it resulted in a, in a major victory for the Irish and French soldiers against the might of the British Crown in 1798. Uh, with, with poor equipment, small numbers, they managed to, to, to defeat the, the British in Castlebar. But unfortunately, they were casualties as well. And uh, one of the significant casualties were uh, four members of the French army who, who were ambushed by the, British, by the British forces in French Hill and they were actually buried on site in French Hill. Now to honour that, uh, a, a, a very significant structure, a plank, was erected in 1876 by James Daly and others. Uh, because as, as the form says, we shall remember them. Well, thank you all for welcoming to this beautiful county of Mayo. Um, we, we've had a, a fantastic welcome uh, over the year. Uh, we had a year of events all around the county. And today in Castlebar is a special day, especially on the 27th of August, because we really mark the races of Castlebar, which is really one of the highlights of the 1798 campaign of Humbert. On this day, this exact date, 225 years ago, the French came into town. I mean, I think the history of France and Ireland is so on display, you know, at Moore Hall in French Hill, and, you know, I want to commend Councillor Al MacDonald, who's done so much to keep that particular area alive. The Moore Hall project is still really exciting, massive potential. But then to come back here into the centre of Castlebar to see both tricolours in display, the Irish and the French tricolour, uh, right across the town, and the grave of John Moore here. It's a beautiful part of them all. Uh, and I have to say, the mall looks resplendent. Uh, well done to the uh, local Castlebar Municipal District. Um, and well done to Castlebar Lions Club on bringing in. Most important thing for me is that this isn't just for politicians or academics. That we enjoy, involve community in this connection and involve, enjoy community in this relationship. So I commend Castlebar Lions Club and everyone involved in the festival in doing that. Yeah, it's been a tremendous success and I want to just acknowledge uh, all the organising committee, the Castlebar Lions Club, the Men's Shed, all the volunteers, the local authority here in Mayo County Council, uh, and what has been, you know, a really, really significant uh, couple of days, uh, not just for Castle Bar, but last week we've seen in Ballina, uh, and it certainly has marked uh, the festive uh, celebrations of the commemoration of 1798. Over the weekend, it has been a marvellous success. Brought a lot of people to Castle Bar, revived the whole 1798 uh, French uh, uh, Revolution, brought it to the younger people, which is very important. It carries over the centuries, over the, over the generations. And believe it or not, I stood right here, right here, in 1961, when John Moore, the first president of Connacht, uh, was reinterred here in 61. And what a day th that was. And I'm delighted to be here all those years on and have seen so many summers actually, uh, Henry, in, in between. Uh, but that was a huge day. Uh, the president, De Valera, was here that day and all the entourage. And it was a, as one of the biggest crowds that ever was, in, was uh, attended in Kessel Bar. So it's great to be here all of those years later. I'm delighted to be here in the capacity as Cahir, or last Cahir look of Mayor County Council. So anything is possible. Congratulations once again to all involved on in what was undoubtedly a very, very successful festival. We're going to leave you now with a fireworks display from the military barracks in Casabar to close off the festival. Now, don't forget you can catch up on all the programmes on the TV Ireland YouTube channel. And I look forward to your company next week at the same time. So until then, Slong before.